All right, we're back. It's another episode of Breaking the Safe with, I don't know, what should we say? Professional scrum trainers, professional Kanban trainers, Suval's a safe trainer, agile practitioners, Yuval Urit and Ryan Ripley. Uh, we've been getting together to talk about the safe topics in the context of professional scrum, where things are different, where they're the same, where we have some beef, where we can get agree. Um, so be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Uh, leave your questions in the comments below. We've gotten some great questions. I think at some point, Yuval and I will go... Whoa, we don't need that music. Yuval and I will go live at some point and hammer out a lot of those questions. I think that could be fun to kind of rapid fire and even pause and go a little bit later on some of those too. So keep an eye out for that, but you got to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, be sure to check out Yuval on Twitter at Yuval Urit. Be sure to check out all of his stuff as well. He's got a lot of great material out there. All right. That's what all the cool YouTubers have to do, Yuval. Now we can actually talk. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good, good. Crisp Friday here in Boston. It is. It's very, it's just cold in Indiana. Like I'm, we're all, everyone's like, oh, the Midwest, you all are so tough. It's like, oh, it's getting old, but uh, it is just cold. But today we've got a great topic. So, of course, Yuval and I are big fans of Ken Schwaber, uh, the founder of Scrum.org, the co-creator of Scrum, co-author of the Scrum Guide, uh, author of many excellent books on Scrum. I, I always recommend people start with Ken's books and then work outward towards mine and Simon Reindel's and Stephanie Ackerman's and, you know, but start with Ken. So we're huge fans of Ken. Um, love the guy. We're with him. Um but he has this blog post article, which uh, we wanted to talk about. Uh, he wrote uh, back in 2013. So this is a little bit older. Uh, Unsafe at any speed. This was a response to um, kind of the early developments of safe as it was really gaining traction and steam in the community. Um, and he wrote a very interesting blog post here. You've all I mean, I, we've both read this many, many times just from a high level. And then maybe we'll dig in. Kind of what's your take on where, where Ken was going with the argument? So, I mean, as you're talking about Ken, uh, just before we go there, I was uh, thinking whether it would be a dream come true to teach a safe class with Ken in the audience or whether it would be uh, a nightmare. <laughs> it would be interesting for sure, um, li like this blog post. So... I mean, if you read through what um, what Ken is talking about here is uh, the commercial aspects of the safe versus scrum world. And we've kind of touched on this before, uh, but Ken is pointing out the roots of safe. Where is it coming from? And for, for those of you that don't know, uh, Dean Leffingwell, who created um, the Scaled Agile Framework, um, also created uh, the rational unified uh, process ahead of that, um, which isn't very agile. That's the, the bottom line. And what Ken is basically saying here is that the rational unified process people are catching the agile bandwagon in a sense. They're taking advantage of the fact that agile is getting more and more popular and um, trying to build a business um, based on that. And I, you know, that's a fair criticism. That's a fair uh, perspective um, on what's going on in the market. I guess the key question is, okay, these people had history in rational unified process. Is that a problem? I mean, I didn't have... Um, history in the rational unified process. I got into safe from being an uh, an agilist, and I appreciate some of the discipline, some of the um, full solution thinking that is going into uh, safe. Some of our, you know, uh, common friends and very you know, um, influential people in this professional scrum world uh, have a lot of experience um, in the rational unified process world uh, as well, um, not to name names. I, I guess the key question is, 
as part of the rap people getting into the agile world, did they do that with a real understanding and appreciation for lean agile thinking? Or are they doing this as, you know, um, a dirty trick or whatever? From what I'm seeing in the safe community, you know, people are real about agile. They might have come from the rational unified process, but they're real about agile. Same like our colleague professional scrum trainers that came from being project managers are great agilists. You mentioned some of their names um, in the in the books that uh, <laughs> you recommend. So I don't see an issue with the fact that there's rational unified process. Here. Well, I mean, for these people, I judge, you know, what's going on with safe. What are the principles? What are the practices? Yeah. I have one other recommendation or a couple of other recommendations for people to think about in this area, but I'll pause here. Now, I mean, it's a, I came from a, a project management uh, rep looking background and switched to, to Scrum. I mean, I, I, I mean, if we think about um, Scrum.org, uh, Dave West is a, is a great friend of ours. We respect Dave immensely. He's done a wonderful job leading Scrum.org and I consider him a very good friend. Many, many years ago, he led the RUP initiatives for IBM. And so it's, it's one of those where I think we just learn and progress as we go. And so, you know, calling out uh, the boys from RUP, I mean, it's an interesting, I think he's, it's definitely a provocative opening. I think Ken is making a very good point here that, that look, this is, you know, his argument is that safe looks exactly like RUP did. One size fits all, but you can customize it later, but you really can't customize it. Um, I like that he does put try to be polite that they really, you know, he's making the point that they don't belong there. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if the root in Rupp is really that kind of damning of an argument. You know, I don't think it, it means that people can't adopt an agile practice, but I do think he's definitely making a super strong connection here between safe and Rupp, which is not a flattering uh, comparison, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so I, I think what's interesting, he does invoke the, the manifesto and talks about undoing the damage waterfalls done to the profession um, and really thinking about, um, you know, why organizations would pick safe. And I think he's correct here uh, in some senses, right? That, um, you know, they'll measure improvement from a management perspective. Investments are supposed to have in turn returns. And so there are some metrics that, that perhaps get overemphasized. Um, what's interesting um, is, is that some of these, these, you know, these metrics that Ken's preferring, all of this evolved into evidence-based management, right? Which is, um, I think, another interesting look. Um, he, you know, in this blog post from 2013, he's developed several programs. This is all consolidated, I believe, into evidence-based management, which you've all, I think you would agree, is an excellent uh, measurement framework. It is. It is. Another interesting comment on this is if you look at mm, SAFE's guidance, and SAFE has evolved <laughs> since 2013 uh, as well, is there's more and more stuff that you would find familiar from an evidence-based management uh, perspective in SAFE. SAFE's measure and grow competency looks at outcomes, look at, looks at flow metrics, um, looks, yes, also at the competency of the organization, but emphasizes that that's not necessarily the most important thing or the one thing you need to look at. You need to balance, you know, competency and maturity with are we achieving outcomes? Are we improving, you know, customer satisfaction, employee motivation, um, all of these things that are very similar to what Kenny is uh, talking about here. Yeah, I do like his his last paragraph here, and I think it comes down to, you know, the discussion is really prescriptive over emergence. And does safe tip the scales too far towards emergence? I think you can make an argument there. Does um, Scrum and Kanban leave a lot of decision making back to the users of of the frameworks or the the ideas? And then does that lead to possible misuse, misapplication, misunderstanding, and problems? Absolutely. 
I think this is a philosophical difference. Um, this is a, um, a, an argument against prescription. And it's one that I think we're still, we're still having this debate today, which is interesting. It's almost 10 years on it is 10 years on and, and we're still having this exact debate that Ken highlighted. What I love though, is that at the center of uh, the solution is evidence-based management. I still believe that's true today, right? You could put evidence-based management on top of a safe, uh, organization. You could put EBM on top of a scrum organization and help them improve their practices and move more towards emergence uh, and, and great delivery, especially through the, the three levels of goals, the empirical nature of how we measure. Uh, I think he nailed it in that second to last paragraph talking about, and it was almost like a, 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 a glancing, it was almost like a glancing shot or just kind of an afterthought of by the way, there's EBM over here, but I think he had the solution buried in this post 10 years ago. Yeah, I think EBM can be very useful, not just when you're looking at safe or scrum or. Right. Scrum. Yep. If you're looking at however way you're working as an organization, EBM is probably one of the best ways to accomplish what Ken wrote about in his last paragraph here, which is to think for yourself. Yep. To. Think about things the right way. Understand the principles. We're very strong on lean agile principles in SAFE. I would say they're more important than all of the practices that are there. The practices, I mean, are there because they help people um, relate SAFE to their current situation. And I agree with you. It's a philosophical debate. Do we want to help them map or do we want to shock them or you know, get them to open their eyes to something different. I mean, calling people different weird names back in 93, like product owner and scrum master and calling things sprint, Ken had a very, Ken and Jeff had very clear intent in their choices about language. Uh, and the intent there was very different than the change management perspective that SAFE took. That's a difference. Sometimes, it makes sense to use different names. Sometimes it makes sense to bring the names a bit closer to where the organization is. I would say to people that are looking at these different options, think for yourself what's the right chain management approach in your context. Don't follow dogma. Don't treat this as a religion. As long as you understand the principles and you think about what's the effective change management approach in your world, you'll be fine. Another accommodation I have for people that kind of relates to this is it doesn't really matter whether the people that you are um, working with, partnering with to, to help you go agile, if they have a background in rational unified process or PMI, everybody, you know, has their own past. I guess the thing to double check is are those people agilists at heart? Well, whether they came from you know an agility background or joined it along the way, I, I care less about. But do they live agile? Do they really relate to the principles of empiricism, evidence-based management, self-management, continuous improvement? Do they really understand? all of the options in this space and are really working with you to find the best way for you to work, leveraging these principles of empiricism. Is this working? Is that working? Let's try something. Let's let the people that are going to work in a different way be involved in managing things in a different way and figuring out the ways of working and to not have this... Um, misconception that you can have a way of working that you design, that you have a documentation of, and that's the way that you're going to work. If people are telling you, this is how we're going to go agile, that's the first sign that they know nothing about real agility. And whether what they use to have that conversation is safe or scrum or the Spotify model that isn't really a model, that's the first sign that you're heading into trouble. 
Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree. Um, I do think Ken made some great points here, though, right? And so I want to make sure we... Um, look, we I, I fully believe that people that come from a rough background can be very successful, influential, and impactful agilists, right? We, we've, we know many that have done it. You know, I, I think Dave does a great job with scrum.org. I think I've been able to transition. You've been able to, to make some changes. I think we can... We're, there are people are certainly capable of um, breaking out of different boundaries and constraints and adopting new ones, which is really all this is. It is a setting of boundaries and constraints and some are looser than others, some are tighter than others. Um, and so that I don't think that's the core issue. I think the core issue really comes down to, you know, Ken makes a, a great point here. You can't buy your way to a better future organizations are going to open their checkbooks to safe. They're going to open, I, let's, let's expand this a bit. They're going to open their checkbooks to whatever solution they believe is going to be the best fit, measure the outcome. You know, to Ken, I think the point Ken's making here is that if you measure it, you're going to find that it wasn't worth it. I think that's what he's trying to express here. And, and I think sometimes that's probably true. I, I think there are instances where implementations have gone awry. I think that's true for, Kanban and Scrum and Safe and and across the board, um, in this case, you know it's this is the part I love about this post. Measure it, and if it's not working, switch it up. And I think that's that's part of the engaging your brain that that's often missing in a lot of these transformations. So, yeah, I think Ken again, um, it's a genius blog post, um, rightfully pointing out some weaknesses of Safe. Right, the the rigidity or the the prescriptiveness is something we really can't argue away from, but it's also to your point, Yuval, it's, is it contextually, is that going to be an, an easier lift then, or is it a better fit lift than um, Scrum or Kanban? And then whatever you do measure, right? I, I just, I, I think that is, that's so ahead of its time in 2013 and it's still not being done enough in 2023. I think there is one other thing. Yes, I fully agree. There, there's one other thing that's kind of implicit in this blog post that aligns, I think, pretty well with what SAFE uh, is doing. So who's Ken talking to here? For me, this reads like the audience is people who are other agilists, but also people that are leading edge all organizations that are thinking about how do I get my organization to a, a more agile place? And I think it's good that Ken is talking to these people because over the years, there's been, been this anti-pattern in the Scrum world, which was we engage with the teams, the leaders just sign the checks or yeah. buy their way to a better future. And this kind of relates to what Deming said. It's not just about writing checks. It's not just about paying for training or coaching or telling your people to go agile. If you really need to, if you really want to successfully make this transition as a leader, you need to engage yourself. Um, I would extend this mindset to say, you know, as a leader, you need to look very carefully at Things like EBM, like evidence-based management, the lean agile principles, you need to actually think about being a scrum master for your organization. Not because you need to be the master of scrum for organization, but the mindset of coaching, mentoring, pointing north, creating the space, serving your people in figuring out a way, not just by staying out of the way, but by balancing effectively between leading proactively and doing nothing sometimes and, you know, creating the space where people can figure out a way, that's where we want to be. And like Deming said, if you can show up, don't bother sending anybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the leaders, I, in a lot of ways for these transformations, they have to go first. Right. I think Deming is, is again, spot on. It's a, this was an oldie, but a goodie. I enjoy reading uh, through Ken's blog. Uh, again, it's just, it's amazing. Look, I full disclosure, I'm a big Ken fan. So I think um, I've had the, the, the rare, the, the privilege of, of sitting down and I took a class with them. 
as I've able to, ha I've been able as a PST to uh, sneak into a few dinners. And it's, he's one of those people where you just stay quiet. And if he asks you a question, you answer it quickly um, because he's just that smart and you really have to be very precise and concise. He, he's a, he, I've always had lovely, wonderful interactions with him. He's always been patient and kind with me. Um, but he's also one of those that just, there's a lot of good stuff that comes out. And so even these, these old blog posts still, I think, hold up well today. There's a lot of good things to mine out of them. I hope that people are still reading these, but just the, the level of thought that goes into this, I just, you cannot overstate, right? He just, uh, this is one of those people that you've all, I'm sure you've run into him too, that, uh, you just can tell they're next level thinkers and you, you're just praying that you're keeping up. So, yeah. And, uh, the Ken's certainly one of them. So good insights from Ken. I love the pointers to, to EBM. I think the cautions about RUP are appropriate, but to your point, Yuval, if leaders go first, they understand what they're getting into They're They have that adaptive mindset. Um, a lot of good things are possible too. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. We'd love to hear all of your comments and questions about Ken's posts or any other, uh, or Ken's post here, and then any other uh, safe questions. So leave them in the comments below. Your comments will turn into questions at some point. And like I said, we may even go live. Uh, be sure again to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Check out the socials. We'll get you all social uh, information in the the Twitter or all of his Twitter and LinkedIn stuff in the uh, show notes. You can check him out as well. Uh, for your all, I'm Ryan. Keep watching these Breaking the Safe videos. Keep asking good questions. Let's keep digging. We'll see you next time. See you, Ryan. <laughs>